Good evening and welcome. Would like to call to order the March 23rd meeting of the Riverside Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, <clears throat> First order of business this evening is approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting and public hearing minutes of February 24th, 2016. Uh, yes. Sonia, would you kindly call the roll? I would love to. Chairman Cuchero? Present. Commissioner Gary? Present. Commissioner Lesnia? Here. Commissioner Mateo? Here. Commissioner Mendoza? Here. Commissioner Pelletier? Here. Commissioner Randall? Here. We have a quorum. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I apologize for skipping the roll. Um, so resuming our uh, agenda, if, uh, if you've had a chance to review the minutes that were provided to you, um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second from Adrian. Any discussion? Okay, motion to approve. Oh, you want uh, to call yeah, the roll? Would you please call the roll? Yes. All right, Commissioner Gary? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Lesniak? Yes. Commissioner Mateo? Aye. Commissioner Mendoza? Yes. Commissioner Pelletier? Yes. Commissioner Randall? Yes. Chairman Cuchero? Yes. Okay, uh, motion passes. Uh, we are unaware at this point of any visitor petitions, citizen requests, or communications uh, from ahead of time. Were there, are there any that have come in since? Okay. Uh, at this point, would like to invite uh, Trustee Pollock to provide a village board update if he has one at this point. Uh, Great, thanks, Doug. Okay, um, would like then to move to agenda item number seven: public hearings and recommendations. First item on the agenda is a uh, petition to uh, rezone the property at 43 East Quincy. Uh, do I have a motion to a motion and a second to continue the public hearing that was started in February to open the continued public to open the continue the continuation of the public hearing okay all right um, at this point would like to uh, invite Sonia to uh, provide an update from staff with respect to this matter rezone this property. Uh, no offer at this time has been submitted to the property owner to purchase the property and therefore the village will be withdrawing its petition. If an offer comes in that does require the rezoning to the property, and this may come before you again at that time, but at this point the village's petition is being withdrawn. So no, no further action is required then? No further action is required then. Okay. All right. So we can then close the, the public hearing on this matter, yes? Yes, uh, we, we can go ahead and close the public hearing and put this matter to rest. There won't be any discussion or need for a vote after that. Okay, so do I have a motion to close the public hearing on this matter? Yes. Second. Sonia? All right. Commissioner Lesniak? Yes. Commissioner Mateo? Yes. Commissioner Mendoza? Yes. Commissioner Pelletier? Yes. Commissioner Randall? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Aye. Chairman Cuchero? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a public hearing to consider a request for a variation to our zoning ordinance with respect to a property at uh, 238, 238 uh, Scottswood Road. Uh, given that uh, I am uh, within the radius uh, of the subject property, I am recusing myself uh, from uh, chairing this portion of the meeting and uh, am ask, have asked uh, Commissioner uh, David Lesniak to uh, chair this portion while I recuse myself. If we could get a uh, second, a uh, motion and a second to appoint uh, Commissioner Lesniak as Chairman Pro Tem and uh, Chairman Kachera's absence. So moved. Second. Okay, I'd like to open up the, the second uh, meeting uh, for uh, PZ 16-005-238 Scottswood, a request for a front porch variation. Uh, do I need to call the roll again for this one? Nope. Uh, I would like to, uh, to make uh, 
do and, and get this going quickly is that there was a public notice uh, put out uh, the variation from section 10-3-3H-2 of the Riverside Ordinance which allows porches in any front yards provided they meet the setback requirements for such yard in the applicable zoning district and in such other relief as necessary in order to build an enclosed front porch which is encroachment which encroaches 15 feet into the required street yard um, the notice has been sent out to the districts it has been put in a newspaper uh, so with that said I'd like to uh, to open this up uh, we do have uh, I believe the petitioner here uh, if you would like to Swear at anyone. Anybody that wants to speak, if they would stand up and be sworn in, please. Any anybody? Yes. So even if, if you if think you might speak, just go ahead. Does that include me? Yep. That yes. includes you. All right. If you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony that you are about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Dave Pollard. I'm a uh, architect and principal with Live Companies. I'm also a uh, Riverside resident. I started working with uh, Rob and Carrie a little while ago as they wanted to return their home to its original four square prairie style. <coughs> um, in our research, we found that the original home in 1912 is documented in this photo, which was in the book of the Western Suburbs in 1912, shows this front porch. As they purchased the house several years ago, this was also part of the listing, um, and this is how their house stands now. So we're proposing to bring that porch back, which it's almost like it's meant to have. Um, but our, our challenge is that the setback is determined by the WPA survey, which is only going to the face of the house, which means at some point uh, the porch is torn off between 1912 and present, and it's also possible that it was to torn off prior to the WPA survey. Um, so we're requesting a, a variance because the current zoning ordinance does not allow, a, allow us to add a front porch beyond the street yard setback, which is a, defined by the WPA survey, but we believe that the intent of the setback is that, according to the zoning ordinance, the purpose and intent is that the variability of a residential setbacks from streets is identified as a noteworthy historic characteristic of Riverside and a valuable aspect of the village's status as a National Register uh, Historic Landscape District. So we believe that actually by adding the front porch, we're more in line with the original purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance than it is currently without the front porch. Um, so we open this up to any questions. Uh, you guys can probably answer this better than I can, but essentially, I think it was between 1936 and 1950-something, the Works Progress Authority or administration was hired to, for whatever reason, define all the fronts of all the houses in Riverside. So there's a survey made that shows all of the front yards. And in a typical village, which we are not by any means, um, your zoning ordinance would say if you're R1, your front yard is 40 feet. If you're R2, your front yard's 50 feet and they all line up. Riverside has that variability to front yards, so there's no defined number. It's all based on the survey which was done at that point. And so that's what we're beholden to. So anyone who wants to add to the front of their house cannot, within the zoning ordinance, go beyond what was determined as the front of their house in that survey. Okay. So it doesn't really matter if your home is currently 10 feet from the street or from the property line Correct. 40 feet. Exactly. Exactly. As you can, here's a map of the street. You can see the variability that happens. Mm -hmm. Was any consideration given to uh, just designing the porch as it was originally as opposed to an enclosed porch and then also adding some of the architectural features that were there in the original house? Certainly. Um, we're, we're really trying to match the original massing 
of the house. It's very difficult to tell from the, from the photograph, which is over 100 year old, years old, exactly the materiality that existed. But there's obviously prairie details uh, giving horizontal lines. Uh, we're assuming there's probably some sort of a prairie column cap that we want to incorporate as well, and as well as the, uh, the planar aspects of the porch rails that come out. And also, this is a full foundation porch, so it'll have that mass that the original one did. So the intent is to essentially try and solve what the original design intent is and build that as a usable enclosed porch uh, for the Hermans, but definitely. But the essence of my question is a non-enclosed porch versus an enclosed porch. Sure. And the challenge is, is it's an expensive proposition to build this porch, and the Hermans would like it to be usable space. So we believe that returning the home to its original de design intent, we don't believe in enclosing it in any sort of prairie style um, window systems, which you see all over the place, would be disrupting the, de the design intent of the open porch, which wasn't column and rail, it was solid with piers. So we don't believe that enclosing it is, is uh, disturbing the original design intent. Commissioners, any other questions that you have before I start? Well, in order for us, <coughs> excuse me, in order for us uh, to consider a variance here, we've got certain criteria to consider. Uh, two of the main ones being uh, that if we did not grant a variance, that the homeowner would suffer an undue hardship. Uh, the second being uh, that the situation faced by the homeowner uh, is due to unique circumstances. Uh, can you let us know your position on both of those? Um, I, I don't have the zoning application in front of me. Uh, Sonia, do you have that by any chance? Yes, they all have copies of that. Or can I read your mm -hmm. copy? You certainly yeah. may. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so we claim C in this, that the variation if granted will not alter the essential character of the, of the locality. So our answer is that the variation will not alter the essential character of the locality, but will in fact restore the home to its original design intent with the character of the locality. The owner seeks to build a front porch of usable enclosed space in accordance with the original design as documented in the 1912 publication. So essentially what we're saying, and you could claim it as a hardship, is that the zoning ordinance is preventing them from building to the original design intent of what was there previously, um, as documented in the book as we discussed. The home is shown in a photograph with a, with a large prairie style front porch and noted as the home of Mr. Robert Leicester Jordan. Okay. The application requires that we find all three of those criteria, A through C. Well, that's, I mean, um, it's hard to claim a hardship other than the fact that they're limited from building what is defined as um, also front yard <laughs> setback, or um, you're allowed to encroach in the front yard according to the zoning ordinance, except, except that existing encroaching porches may be replaced, rebuilt, or restored in the front, corner, side yard, or street yard to their existing form, footprint, and depth. So if we were really to dig into that, we don't even need a variance because we are restoring it to that as documented, I believe. But it's no longer existing. Correct. So that's a challenge. So you could claim that as a hardship. Mm -hmm. Well. Right? I mean. The, the, the challenge presented by any zoning ordinance is that anytime you want to get a variance, you could argue it's the ordinance that's causing me the hardship. Sure. Which, it can't be the ordinance. It can't. It can be. Well, no, it can't be. You have to explain the hardship that would happen if the variation wasn't granted. And that's usually, I mean, that's the hardest part. As far as, you know, C uh, goes, you know, I, I would love to see this house restored to its original intent and, and the way it looked. I think it looks great. Um, but as we're all familiar here, uh, with the difficulty in, in trying to establish what is an undue hardship uh, that the homeowner will suffer in the absence of the variance. Sure. Robin Carey, would you guys like to speak to that? 
You would need to be sworn in. Please. I would need to be sworn in. You raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony that you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, would you, you please want to go, go to the microphone, microphone please? please? Um, mostly I would be reiterating what Dave said in that the, um, the original design of the house incorporates a porch. Um, we are not able at present to restore the porch without the variance. So it is, it is very circular. I understand that. Yeah. <coughs> is there anything else that I can answer? I, I would have more questions for the architect, but I'll let the rest of the commission ask any other questions too. Any other commissions? Have any questions? Okay. I guess I'd like to make a comment, and that is, I think you need to realize we're not politicians here. None of us are elected. We're technicians, and okay. uh, if you've sat through as many of these meetings as all of us have, you'd probably learn that our job is to look at the letter of the law and judge on the letter of the law. And there are times when it breaks our hearts, but we generally rule on that, and that the we make a recommendation or a statement to the Board of Trustees, and it's the Board of Trustees who frequently will overturn anything that we, well, they'll go in the opposite direction from what we do, so. Thank you. Okay, uh, I do have some questions for your architect, if, uh, sure. you don't mind. Uh, you know, oh, that's me. Uh, I noticed that you said you found that your uh, the existing house where uh, it was originally found from the um, in the file from the Riverside Historical Society and the book is in the Berwyn Library which you can also find through Google Books which is um, in 1912 it was the book of the western suburbs okay so that that is something that also the historical society Correct. has okay that was one of the questions. Now, yes. one of the other things is that if I'm looking at the, the middle house, the way it is existing right now, your, uh, um, your doorway is at grade level? No, it's up about six steps. It's above, okay, Three, so. Three, four, five steps. And that would be the same that it would be up on the next one too? Correct. Okay. Uh, now you are looking at enclosing the porch with glass, so it would be heated and and It would be cooled. conditioned space, correct. It would be a con Totally conditioned space. Okay. That's all. The, that's all the questions that I had because I couldn't really tell from the photographs, and they weren't the, the best. And I wanted to ask kind of where the, the photos were taken from. So, uh, with <coughs> that, I would like to uh, uh, not close it, but I do have uh, two responses from neighbors that I would like to. Uh, uh, to read, one is from Joan Weiss, and says, I am a neighbor that lives three doors down from the Herman family. I am unable to attend the meeting tonight. Therefore, I am sending this email to let you know that I am in favor of the front porch construction. I think that it would be a wonderful addition to their home and to the Scottswood block. And that is signed, uh, Joan Weiss. The next one, is from uh, Jessica Francis. Oh, nope. 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 Further down. It's further it got down. forwarded oh, to me. From Catherine Dawn. Dawn. Yes. From Catherine Dawn. Hi, Ben. Happy Friday. Okay. Both Andy and I are writing to support the front house improvements that the Hermans are requesting to move forward with at 238 Scottswood. We are not able to attend a village meeting as we'll be out of town, but wanted to show our support. Take care, I look forward to seeing you around town since the winter weather is warming up, Kathy and Andy Dawn of 239 Scottswood. Okay, those are two. Is there anybody else wishing to speak on the behalf of, yes, I know you were sworn in, so please, go. you may sit down if you would oh, like. Sure. Thanks. My name is Remus Salunas. I'm here with my wife, Victoria, and we also uh, are uh, neighbors 
of the Hermans. We are uh, uh, directly adjacent to them. Would you state your address, please? 230 Scottswood Road. Okay. And uh, we're here to express support. I mean, I guess we can't speak to the technicalities that, we, uh, that this board or this group is supposed to enforce. But I do believe that rules are often made in a very general sense, right, to deal with very many different types of situations. And I don't know how familiar you are with that particular property, but the lots there are very large. <coughs> They're very wide. They're, you know, 100 feet wide in a neighborhood of 250 feet deep, including myself on either side of the property. And I generally think that it, there's, there is some consideration that should be made to the fact that in this situation, right, that a, adding to the front of the building, right, aside from restoring it to historical uh, of, of state that it is, but I do believe that the property itself can absorb that without actually impacting our the neighbors in a negative way, right, or in any way you know, dealing with the visualization and the green space that we have. So for that reason, I'm here to, to request this group, this, this thing to recommend, to allow them to let them restore their home and to build this porch because um, I just think that we should try to encourage our residents to improve their properties. Thank you. Peter Coster. Oh, you would like to go? Okay. Did we swear you in? Oh, okay, we'll swear in everyone. Um, <clears throat> do you swear that the testimony that you are about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Coster? Oh. The house at 238 Scottswood is set back much further than the neighbor's house. And it seems beyond comprehension that with uh, the map of the WPA that the people who had this property forfeited their right to the front of a house, the front property uh, in front of a house. That wasn't part of a bargain when they, when the, when the various owners got in, owned this house. So uh, our reaction is that, the, that there's nothing negative with this request. Number one and number two, it would improve the block and bring it, bring it more in character with the historical uh, uh, character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Hardy, Miss Lewis. Um, I'd like to speak to the hardships. Um, so first, we buy homes on Scottswood. <laughs> to be able to restore them to their historical beauty. And the hardship is that we're encouraged to do that with, through the realtors and through everyone. Um, and to be denied realizing that dream and vision is a hardship of the spirit. Because when we go to look for a home here, and we are looking in old neighborhoods because we love and are passionate about them and we can see past the wreckage of the 1950s <laughs> and we could see how a home can be returned back to its grandeur. To be able to, to for absurd reasons, to be told we can't, I think is a, is a hardship. Um, so first, and then secondly, um, you could argue, one could argue that um, the Hermans would experience a hardship if they would like to uh, expand their home, grow their family. Um, a yard expansion, a back expansion, they would require um, destroying some of the existent, existing um, additions that have been made, the driveway, a group, potentially um, the, the back deck and porch. So this seems to be in the spirit of Riverside to use space in a way that is smart and 
um, and is true to the integrity of the home and also allowing them a way to expand that's not um, destroying the spirit of the town and destroying the architectural beauty. So I believe those are hardships. Thank you. Can I make a, uh, another comment as well? And that's kind of going back to the intent of the zoning ordinance that I read before. And that's that front porches are allowed to encroach into the setback. And this is from the zoning ordinance that they may be replaced, rebuilt, or restored in the front corner side yard or street yard to their existing form, footprint, and depth. So to me, the zoning ordinance, and this isn't for a variance, is saying, if you guys want to rebuild your porch to what it was, you can do that. So my question is, because we know that the intent is there in the zoning, my question is, what is the valid documentation of what was there? If you're going to tear off a porch and rebuild it, do you have to document every detail of it? Do you have to have the dimensions? Or would a photograph suffice? Because if a photograph suffices as that documentation, then we have that, and we don't even need to be in for a variance. Can I address that? What's it, James? Can I? Um, yeah, I actually, uh, you know, seeing that this was on the agenda, I pulled the ordinance where we made the amendment that you just referred to. And a couple things I wanted to point out for the benefit of everybody. First of all, the um, it, what you're missing and what you just read is it says existing encroaching port encroaching porches. So correct. Um, That's what I'm saying. Know, is the, so so this is not existing at this time. But one one thing that I thought was interesting in looking through the old ordinance that we passed in 2010 is that uh, the problem that everyone was encountering at that time was that the D WPA maps uh, mm -hmm. apparently were measuring the, the front building line of the property as opposed to the porches. So everyone who had a porch at that time that came out in front of the building line uh, was considered to be legal non-conforming because they were encroaching into the front yard. So that the board made a decision at that time uh, based on a plan commission recommendation that uh, we wanted to make it easy for people to put porches back where, where they were, but because they had, were crumbling or aged or needed to be rebuilt, uh, they, they couldn't fix the existing one, they were just gonna replace it or rebuild it. Um, we wanted that to allow them to do that, which is why we passed uh, the, the exception that the architect just read that says existing encroaching porches may be replaced, rebuilt, or restored in the front corner side or street yards to their existing form, footprint, and depth. Um, so I guess what I would say is we don't know when this porch was taken off. Uh, it could have been after the WPA map because the WPA map is not going to show the porch. Um, but at the time that it came off, obviously before we passed this amendment in 2010, uh, they couldn't have rebuilt uh, without a variation because it would have been considered encroaching. And, and so if they had this porch today and they were seeking to, to do this, that, that would be fine. But prior to 2010, it wouldn't have been. So uh, to the extent that that plays into your considerations, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Okay. No, thank you. Anything so, else? Thank you. Sonia, do you have any staff comments? Yes. Um, we've gone over um, <clears throat> some of the higher level talk here, but just to get into the nitty gritty, um, they are proposing to build a new f enclosed front porch that is 15 feet by 29 feet. It's a one story front porch um, on the front of the house. So this means that the, exist the proposed front porch is going to approach 15 feet into the required street yard. Uh, the proposed porch must meet the required building coverage and impervious surface limitations. Staff has run the calculations and this is not going to bring them over their building coverage or impervious surface <coughs> uh, percentages. Uh, the other items that I wanted to bring up that you have the requirements that uh, Commissioner Mendoza brought up for standards for a variation, which is that the owner of the property in question will suffer undue hardship in the absence of such variation that the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances and that the variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. 
If the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval of the variation, staff does recommend the following two conditions to be applied, and that is that the front porch shall not encroach more than 15 feet in, from the existing house, and that the porch shall not exceed one story in height. So that would be staff's recommendations to add to your, <coughs> if you do recommend approval. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to, to speak or in behalf or any? If no, I'd like to close this portion of the public hearing and have a discussion amongst the, uh, uh, the commissioners here in regards to this. Uh, so with that, I did, do I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. All right, uh, this portion of the public hearing is closed. What I would like to do is open it up for discussion. I'd like to do this kind of in two parts, if you don't mind, and that is one to talk about, obviously, the three items that they are supposed to meet, and then I guess what I also would like to do is discuss, you know, what options they, they have. And uh, uh, I'd like to start with... Uh, with the zoning requirements that they need to meet in terms of the, uh, the three items, and that is that the owner uh, of the property in question will suffer an undue hardship uh, in the absence of such variation. What's the commission's opinion of that? Go ahead. Well, first of all, full, full disclosure, um, I know the house pretty well because the previous owners are, are good friends of ours. Uh, we've exchanged visits even with my mother-in-law in France while they visited us over there. In fact, they have all of our ice skates from our ice rink right now down <laughs> in Millennium Park. Um, <clears throat> so I know the house pretty well and I've helped them technically uh, as, a, as an engineer and as a uh, handyman with uh, a few of their problems. Uh, but with respect to the undue hardship, there already is one room on the house in the back which is an was an enclosed porch and is now heated. Um, and uh, they added a, a second porch in the rear that could be done, could also be enclosed. I, I disagree with the comment that was made that there, there could be additional expansion in the back. There's plenty of room back there, I would think. Um, and I certainly understand the undue hardship when I was beat up pretty badly by the Preservation Commission back 30 years ago when we wanted to restore our carriage house and we were denied that right and it sank into the ground another foot since then and now I'm suffering even more problems in getting it up out of the ground and restoring it. But the question of undue hardship is um, a literal interpretation that we have to face and uh, much as I like the house and I like the ideas um, it's, I don't see that we can at all agree, as Commissioner Mendoza said, with the concept that there is no undue hardship. And the same is true with number three, uh, that it doesn't alter the essential character of the locality. We don't have a mandate <coughs> to be <coughs> architectural police and judge individual houses. Uh, but we do have a mandate in item three, which is not um, that it will not alter the essential character of the locale. And that to me has always meant, okay, if I'm standing on the sidewalk, I'm seeing maybe 10 houses, this is one of 10 houses, and if that changes, does it change my impression of the overall neighborhood? Now, I've driven Scottswood, I live on Scottswood, and I know uh, there are, from the church down to Coonley Road, there are maybe three, maybe four front porches that are enclosed. And most of them are done very nicely and integrated well into the system, and I, I wouldn't even imagine that it was an add-on. So I think it comes across very well. However, in the few cases that do exist where it is an add-on, without speaking about specific properties there, it looks to me like an afterthought, that it's a change to the original intent by the architect, <clears throat> and I, it just, it looks out of place to me. And from that standpoint, I would say that in a 10% rule, when you're looking at 10 houses, it's adding then, or it's detracting some 10% from the overall concept of the, of the house, of the neighborhood. <clears throat> as far as the second point is concerned, 
The plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. Now, I've railed about this many times here on the commission about that word unique. It's virtually impossible to come up with a unique set of circumstances. You can always say, well, there's another house that could have this and could have that and so on. But I'm willing to accept that because we have conditional uh, standards below that. And if we look at uh, B under conditional standards, it says, the conditions upon which the petition for variation is based would not be applicable generally to other property within the same zoning classifications. I mean, it isn't very likely that there are going to be very many other houses out there that had a porch that was torn down before the WPA social program in the 30s came up with jobs for people, and then suddenly somebody wants to add a porch back on in later years. So I think generally that would be true, and that the condition of B gives us the right to accept condition two above. So my objections then are in one and three, but two I, I maintain would be met as far as this is concerned. But as I said a little earlier, we're technicians here and we're not allowed to really have a, a soft heart and do the things that we might like or that we might want. Uh, we pretty much have to call it as it is and pass it on to the board uh, and let the board make the political decision that might soften things. Uh, I would disagree, uh, Commissioner Gary, on the issue that it wouldn't change the nature of, of, the, uh, of the area. I think it would, I mean, it looks good to me in the drawings. And uh, there are a number of, of houses on that block that have these porches. Uh, and quite honestly, I think it would enhance the appearance of the property as a whole. <clears throat> um, so I would disagree on that. Uh, I do agree that this is probably as close to unique circumstances as, as I've heard being here, to have a porch stripped off, WPA comes in, things change, and now it's no longer an existing porch that could be replaced. So I, I do find that yeah, it is uh, unique in my opinion. Uh, however, uh, the issue of, of suffering an undue hardship, uh, which is always the hardest uh, criteria to meet, uh, I just don't see it is uh, being present here. Uh, the homeowner is not going to lose uh, any value of the house as a result of the denial, or of a denial. Um, they would not lose any functionality of the house as it currently exists. Um, I don't see any real, other than an emotional desire uh, to, to alter it back to its original form, I don't see or find that there would be uh, uh, a resulting undue hardship uh, to the homeowners if this is not granted. So uh, on that basis, I would say that it does not qualify, in my opinion, for a variation. <clears throat> and, I, and I agree with the commissioner here that uh, you know, these are the hard decisions that we have to make if we're going to apply uh, the rules as they are given to us and maybe in certain circumstances they don't seem to make sense uh, for a particular property uh, but we can't just think of the one particular property we have to think of this as a whole so those are my thoughts thank you Jill comments uh, I agree that I don't see a hardship here when we considered hardships, we have houses by the river that because of changes in the river, they're flooding all the time and they have to build up. That's a hardship. This I don't see as a hardship. Respectfully, I don't see this as a unique circumstance. We know people want to build front porches on their homes and if we allow one home to encroach into the street yard, we're gonna have other people wanting to do it. So that's not a precedent that I think we should be setting or recommending to the board to set. Um, I think it looks lovely. I drove by today. I don't think the sight lines would detract from the block. The change in sight lines, I think changing it, restoring it to a four square would be lovely, but we can't make our recommendations based on aesthetics, unfortunately. Teresa. Actually, I'm wondering if um, Attorney Morris could comment on a couple of things. I'm reading in letter A under hardship. Um, it states uh, that the particular physical surrounding shape or topographical conditions of the specific property involved will bring a particular zoning hardship is what the requirement is. And I'm just wondering 
This is on your supplemental you're talking about. Um, I'm actually just reading the form, and it in the form it says a zoning hardship. Okay, let's get I'm wondering what the meaning is to that. So in the code it reads, for the purpose of supplementing the above standards, the Planning and Zoning Commission may also take into consideration the extent to which the following facts favorable to the applicant have been established by the evidence. And letter A says that the particular physical surroundings, shape, or topographical conditions of the specific property involved will bring a particular zoning hardship upon the owners as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the regulations were carried out. Yeah, and I would understand the word zoning in that context to mean that there's a particular provision of the zoning code that's preventing them from doing what they're doing, which is why they need relief. So that the code's not the hardship, but right. that's... As it relates to the property specifically, either the physical surroundings, shape, or topographical conditions, it's causing a hardship. Okay. And then with regard to the the porch, um, the rebuilding of a porch. If yes. one was in disrepair, <clears throat> an existing porch, the homeowner would not be able to rebuild it. An open porch would not be able to be rebuilt as yes. an enclosed porch. Yes, they, oh, as an enclosed porch. Right. Um, I believe that to be correct. Yeah, I believe that to be correct. The, the, terminology used in the ordinance was uh, existing form. Yeah. Existing form. Yes. Right. Let me find it. But yeah, essentially, essentially to reproduce what is already there. Right. Okay. So I, I guess where I'm going with that is, um, you know, it seems, it seems to me that one could consider a hardship being that the porch was there prior to the WPA and, or, and was torn down rather prior to the, the WPA maps. Um, you know, the WPA maps are the best record that we have. I think that's why it was chosen um, as the basis but it's, it, there's no, nothing magic about it. You know what I mean? That point in time, um, I think that Riverside is all about kind of restoration and preservation. So I can see where that might be considered a hardship that the porch was removed before that map was created. Um, but I think that given that the intent is restoration, restoration and preservation, um, and the fact that, you know, the change in our ordinance in 2010 would not have allowed an enclosed porch. Um, I think that, I think I could see the, the hardship, but um, I think we would have to add an additional condition of the porch could not be enclosed. That it would be an open porch so that it met the form of the original porch as illustrated in the photograph. Um, as far as uniqueness goes, I do think that this is a unique situation. I'm sure there are not very many homes in Riverside where you could say that, that the, the original porch was removed prior to the WPA. So I, I don't think that we're opening ourselves up to a precedence of, you know, allowing additions or new porches in front yards or in street yards. Thank Mr. Chairman? Uh, Great. Yeah. Before, okay. Yes. Uh, before we go on, I just wanted to clarify a couple things. Uh, first, the, um, the 2010 ordinance about rebuilding says existing encroaching porches, whether enclosed or unenclosed, may be restored, reconstructed, or replaced uh, to their existing form, footprint, and depth. So to the extent that the existing form is open, it would be rebuilt as open. To the extent it was closed, it, it would be rebuilt as closed. Um, and the point, one of the points I was making earlier is I don't think we know whether it was torn down prior to the WPA map because the WPA map was measuring the building lines and the eaves of the house as opposed to a porch that would be attached to the front of it. Um, that, that was my understanding from the debate we had in 2010. But regardless, 
if it was torn off uh, in 1915 or 1965 or 1995, until we made this change in 2010, uh, they couldn't have, at least under the code as it existed in 2010, they couldn't have rebuilt because it would have been regarded as an encroachment and, uh, and therefore they would have needed a variation at that time. So the intent of the 2010 change was, hey, we want people, if they have a porch, to be able to put that porch back. Um, and so, it, you know, again, if they had this porch in 2000, now they could rebuild it, but for, we don't know when it was torn off, but at the time they couldn't have rebuilt it, so they didn't. Okay. Um, this project is something that's very close to me in my heart in the sense that I'm a big fan of preservation, historic preservation. Um, I do think there is a situation of hardship given our climate that there is no covering on the front porch for people to arrive at. And I've struggled with this in the past with other homes that there was potentially some evidence, but there was no concrete evidence that there was a porch. And it wasn't there currently. There's no breezeway. There's no, there's no protection from the elements for somebody who's standing there to address the house. And so I do think to not allow somebody to put a porch for that kind of weather protection does, in a sense, I, th I think there's a hardship there that needs to be addressed. And they should be allowed to put up a porch to address that hardship of our climate. It's not like we live in Arizona where you're not going to get rained on, <laughs> you know. So um, we deal with snow. We deal with inclement weather, a lot of breezes. And I think the lack of having a porch or being denied a porch does, in a sense, create a hardship for the property. So I, I don't have an issue with that part of the application process. I do think it's a unique situation because we have evidence that the porch did exist at a certain point in time. Um, I don't think it's going to change the character, so I don't see any reason to deny this request outside of the fact that it was we've just been discussing is that they're requesting it to be an enclosed porch and it there's no evidence that it was ever an enclosed porch so that's basically the point at which i stand i don't necessarily agree with commissioner randall's assessment that whether the lack of a overhead uh, covering constitutes a hardship or not. I think there's probably less, uh, uh, you know, there's different ways to resolve that if that is an issue. But I don't think it's incumbent on the board to find the hardship. I think it's on the petitioner to present the hardship, and that was not the basis for this request. So I don't think it's, it's our job to find the hardships. Another I don't see that there is a covering in the new porch. I mean, it's, it seems like it's a well, that's, very short distance. Well, that, that in a sense is a problem with it being enclosed, is it doesn't provide the weather protection that I'm discussing that the original house had by being a place mm -hmm. to stand and arrive and get out of the weather while you're waiting for somebody to answer the door. No. Um, I'm sorry. This is yeah, the public oh, comments closed. I mean, if someone has a, a clarifying question for him, that's I'm just, fine. I'm just gonna, there is a vestibule. That was it. Can I ask a question? You, you, you may ask. Of the architect, when you say there's a vestibule, are you saying that that front porch will have a entry room with two sets of doors, one door to come in. No, it's and an ex exterior vestibule, so it's in a recessed front porch. So the steps go up and you enter into an outdoor space. Mm 
There's a there's a slight no, shadow there. Because I didn't know that we were going to get into the specific floor plan as much as the um, the actual setback issue. Any other comments from the commissioners? Yep. No, I would just I would just like to see it without the closure. Other than that, I have no problem with it. All right. Uh, I've basically saved my comments to the last. I usually do uh, when I chair a meeting because I hate to be the guy that's kind of trying to lead everybody. So I, it's nice actually to listen to everybody's comments. And I, you know, unfortunately, by the letter of our zoning, I don't feel they need all three at all. Now, again, I also. Um, feel that what they're trying to do in the historical nature and adding the porch back on is is a great thing okay however it still just doesn't meet the three requirements i would not be in favor of anything that was enclosed because again if you're talking about trying to restore historic historic means to me change it back to the way it was okay by adding and making it an enclosed room is not changing it back to the way it was. It's basically adding, I will say, an addition onto the front of your house, okay? And when I say an addition, I mean a living addition versus a porch that somebody can go up on and basically stand there or do whatever. It's, there are two different items that, two different uh, images that I see there and that one is not that it's maintaining the historical nature of that house with the front porch. So with that, um, I'd like to ask the commission for their recommendations or if they have anything that they would like to make to the board uh, on this matter. Does anybody have any recommendations or motions? Well, to Greg's point, the, there should be protection in front of homes. People yeah. want that. This has come up before, as I mentioned before, people want to put it in front porches. Has there been discussion of text amendments to make this doable? I haven't been on the commission as long as you have. No, I think when we discussed it and when we, and, and this is what I can recall because I mean, we went through a lot of things for several years, uh, you know, trying to allow people because of the way we were using the WPA map was to, make sure that porches that were there didn't have to be torn down if for some reason you know they were on fire or they just deteriorated the idea was to say no let them be able to rebuild okay and that's how we kind of looked at it. we didn't look at we did discuss at one time the ability for people to uh potentially put porches on the front of the house but it became such a hard thing to kind of manage because based on the WP maps and, and the uniqueness of Riverside, it can change the character by adding, by allowing people to add fronts, front porches on. So it, it was one of those things that I think this was a compromise again to say, okay, if it exists, let them rebuild. If it doesn't exist, then we follow the WP map. Well, I guess in regards to that, if there's no real clear understanding of what the WPA was measuring to and if they were excluding. No, there was. Were they excluding porches or were they measuring just yeah, the principal? Yeah, we've said that like three times already. Well, I uh, thought there was, there was some discussion no. that it was unclear at what po point on no, the house No, they, they, they knew what they were measuring to. The problem is, is that if we adopted the code as it was, we would have a lot of nonconformities in the, in the village, okay? By allowing that to be kind of a, uh, for them to remain at that point based on the WPMAP. Because again, we were always looking for something that we can try to use to create the code. And it wasn't just purely this, it was, it, it had to do with a lot of things. And the WPA, WPA map at that time had the most information that we were allowed to use sure because we couldn't use anything before because nothing really existed. And other than going from 
individual properties and trying to find all the plot of surveys. This was the easiest thing to use at that time and probably the most accurate because they also did do some, in fact, it was a, another gentleman, I believe, at the time that wasn't on the commission, checked the WPA map off of several of the houses and found it to be very accurate. Sorry, I misunderstood uh, yeah. Attorney Mars's statement. I thought you said that it was, it was unclear whether it was to the mass of the principal home or to the front of the porches. So right. If it was. I, I was just saying, I didn't go back and double check, but the, according to the ordinance, the method for measuring street yard setbacks in the village's zoning ordinance is specific to the principal building line in Eaves as measured and recorded in the WPA survey. The measurement would not therefore include or be measured from any existing front porches or lookouts, making any existing front porch extended in the required street yard a legal non-conforming encroachment, which is why we did the amendment. So, going back to my original question, is there a motion or a recommendation? I regretfully move to deny the variance, uh, to recommend a denial of the variance to the board. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Well, let's do a roll call. Do a roll call. Commissioner Gay? Uh, aye. Just a reminder. An aye vote it is recommended to deny. Just to make that clear. Commissioner Lenny Aye. Commissioner Mateo? Aye. Commissioner Mendoza? Aye. Commissioner Pelletier? Nay. Commissioner Randall? Nay. Motion passes four to two. Thank you. The recommendation goes to the village board. They are the ones that ultimately make the decision. So we will be in touch on when that will be on the next agenda. Is, there, is it appropriate this time to uh, add a second motion uh, with uh, secondary considerations or? And then I think, I think that would have been this. where you would have done that at the beginning to, to say what your recommendation was. Now the problem is, is that we've all... Oh, no, I want to... I mean... Uh, oh, okay, just leave it. Fine. Thank you. Can we, can we make a motion in the event that our ruling is overturned? <laughs> it's up to the... It's up to the board. I'm just I'm curious. <clears throat> it, 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 it's like if they decide to overturn us, that we make a motion that they not allow it to be enclosed. Well, well I think we, it's... We can, I'm just curious. We'll I, I don't know how that works, but... Sure. We'll include in the findings of the comments of all the specific commissioners, including the fact that uh, nobody was in agreement with the enclosed aspect. And okay. if, if there was support for it, it would be on the basis that it would be unenclosed. Okay. Just knowing history. Thank you for saying it better than I did. <laughs> okay, uh, Commissioner uh, Paul Kachera, do you want to take over? Or do you want me to continue with it? Pretty much, uh, how do you prefer? Either way. Why don't we just finish it out with uh, Commissioner Lesnay? Uh, there is appears to be no new business. Thank you. Uh, there is no information. Do I have a recommendation to adjourn the meeting? Oh. oh, do we have? Yes. Oh. Can I comment on their new business? Not specifically on the Absolutely. I, I heard a comment tonight that concerned me, and I, and I chastised my fellow board members for this, so I'll say it to you all, too. Uh, I heard the comment, Commissioner Gary, that the board looks at these things differently. And I have to take exception to that because the board is mandated by the same findings of fact as the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I don't want the public or anyone to think, I mean, we may not interpret them the same way, but we don't take political considerations or anything else. We make our decisions based on those three findings of fact. So I just wanted to, to make that clear. Thank you. I, that's, that is something that we should have noted, yes. Okay, so with that. Can I make one more comment just in general on porches? Is it open? No. No, no the, it, the, it's closed. The public uh, portion is closed. I'm sorry. Uh, 
With that, do I, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.